What up, what up? It is I, your proverbial boy, Jeffy, here today in Copenhagen, Denmark, at the famous 17th century waterfront district known as Nihaven. And I'm gonna start off today with a very simple question. How's your progress been with regard to your social skills? Have you been actually making realizations after your nights out that sort of seem to bring all the puzzle pieces together? Have you actually been having epiphanies that let you be more maneuverable in your interactions? And of course, most importantly, have you actually been having success? All right, because that's where the rubber meets the road. Now, when I remember when I, thinking back, when I first started out, the first few months, they seemed very, very painful, almost unbearably so. And at many times, it seemed as though I was kind of just spinning my wheels. And again, I considered many times just kind of giving up. And the only thing that got me through those initial very, very brutal months was the sheer amount of leverage that I had on myself to actually get this handled come hell or high water, whatever it took. In any case, I did manage to slog through that initial pain period, and of course the rest is history. But today, I'd like to discuss why it can be so difficult for your mind to adapt to the new behaviors that you're taking on. And furthermore, I also want to give you some tips on actually how to overcome these obstacles. First off, you gotta understand that you don't want to learn this stuff from your brother-in-law. You don't want to learn this from some guy who knows nothing about it, but was given an assignment by his editor to write some quick tips to get lucky article for some crap magazine, right? The info that I present on this channel, it's all based on years of legitimate in-field experience that we've distilled down to very genuine, very practical advice that literally anyone can use to see immediate improvements in their ability to meet people, in their ability to move things forward to whatever positive outcome you might desire in any social situation. So again, like and subscribe if that's something that might interest you because I'm here and I'm bringing the truth every week. So now, your mind has a certain perception of what level of success you should have. And whether you like it or not, your mind is gonna be constantly playing games with you in an attempt to keep you at the level of success that it thinks that you should achieve. And this is gonna be one of the freakiest, most difficult to deal with barriers that you will ever encounter on your journey of transformation, right? To truly transform and experience that deep identity level change, you're gonna to have to fight and force and continually manage this the entire way through. And one of the biggest games that your mind will play with you is making you remember and focus mostly on the events in your life that it thinks are in alignment with the level of success that you're accustomed to. Therefore, allowing itself to sort of be lazy and avoid having to work through the complexities of adjusting to a new set of beliefs. So, for example, if you don't think that you would be able to easily figure out the complexities that would come along with gaining massive success, your mind will literally selectively screen out and forget all the good things that you've done, right? In order so you don't get any, go, go get any big ideas about where you're capable of and consequently submerge yourself into a new reality that might be taxing for your mind to have to think through. So practically, let's say that you go out to a club one night and you, and you have the goal of you know, meeting and talking to anyone in the place who kind of catches your eye, so to speak. And that's, that's a phenomenal idea, okay? It's, it's good thinking. So you go out. You chat up 10 groups of people that night. Let's say six of them are really cool to you. Let's say four of them kind of blow you off. If your mind does not perceive you as being a guy who could you know, deal with the status that comes with having a lot of positive attention directed at you from others, what it's gonna do, it's gonna cause you to focus on and remember only the people that blew you off. That's all you remember. So your mind's basically pummeling you with this evidence that no, you can't do these new things that you're trying to do. Now your friends might even ask you, like, how'd the night go? How'd your night go, buddy? And you will literally remember all the approaches that did not go your way. And they might even try to remind you, like, well, what about that one? Remember that one? Didn't you have a good time with that girl? And you might be kind of brush it off. You're like, oh yeah, yeah, whatever. Or you'll downplay it. Maybe they'll say something like, yeah, yeah, they were just into me. You know, that, I just got lucky on that one. It, it was too easy, et cetera, et cetera. Now further, you might actually hang out with someone else who actually has the type of skills that you could learn from and you will literally not be able to see how well they're doing. Or you might rationalize that their skills are purely because of their looks or, or some other characteristic that you do not possess. Now, it doesn't matter if this is in direct conflict with your personal desire to get good at socializing, right? Your mind's agenda 
is different than your agenda. Because subconsciously, you're actually wrestling with this belief that you know good enough is good enough. In other words, your way of navigating the world's worked for you so far, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Essentially, the underlying fear here is that the increased level of success will bring with it an increased level of potential problems that you may or may not be equipped to deal with. Now, of course, it is fundamentally important here that you force your mind to continually refocus on the positive that's just happened. Even if it's literally just one little inch of progress. And you can do this by journaling daily. You can do this by talking about the good things that happen with friends of yours who are supportive or just regularly kind of taking stock of how far you've come since you started this stuff, right? So you, went, you go out, did you get a conversation going? Did you get a few laughs? Did you at least get out of your house and actually live life while most people did what? Sat at home, watched TV, or, or maybe browse Reddit on their phone? So whatever it is, you gotta focus on that, no matter how small it might appear. What you gotta do is learn to celebrate the small victories, as we say. I remember back when I was like just starting out, I was absolutely stoked if somebody would even talk to me. Then if I got like a phone number, I'd be totally stoked. And then beyond that, when I actually started meeting up with people after the initial interaction, and I started getting actual results, I was stoked then. And by the way, this is also a principle that I carry over to my live coaching. So if I'm on a boot camp, I wanna set the bar high enough so it's challenging for the client, but not so high that it's impossible. And at the end of the night, we do a debrief, and when reviewing the night with the student, I always make it a point to review the noteworthy interactions that they had, and furthermore, pinpoint what specifically they were doing in that interaction that contributed to it being successful. So once your mind is conditioned to do this on its own, well then you've reached that goal. It's no longer something you're gonna to have to like, do consciously, Although to be fair, if you find yourself kind of falling back into old patterns, then yeah, you're gonna to have to bring back those fundamentals and readjust, realign yourself. Now I get it. You might be saying, well like, come on man, why, why can't I just look at my successes and failures realistically and objectively and, and focus on them with equal weight? But the fact is, without a focus on the positive, you, you really got nothing to build on. Like we're not trying to be like the most super objective scientists here. You're just getting into a headspace where you feel like you're the shit, that you're, you're the man and your mind is no longer resisting behaviors that you know are more attractive. So emotionally, neurologically, what we're doing here is you're trying to force your mind to anticipate a positive response from new behaviors so that they become natural, they become congruent, they become smooth. So to approach confidently, to approach without constraint and, and be expressive, your mind has to anticipate a positive response from it. Right? Like this makes more sense for me to do than wandering around the club aimlessly or just clustering with a group of my friends in the corner. Which by the way, is something that I see almost every single night that I go out in every city that I go to. It's like, you will literally see people who were at the free tour and they seem super fired up to go out and you know, paint the town and you see them at the club. And then while we're actually like taking action with the client, they're just sort of standing there like derping around, looking around. Or if they actually do approach, they do it in this very, very awkward way where they're, they're not owning it. Again, it's very permission-seeking. Like, do, do you wanna? Why? Because they're anticipating a negative response. Again, you have to get to the point where your mind says, this makes more sense to me, approaching confidently, than approaching timidly or self-apologetically, like I've got this big reputation or self-image that I gotta protect. So you have to force your mind to register that it's okay. It's okay to take on a new set of foreign behaviors, even if they're in severe conflict with your current level of social conditioning, right? And to trust in a fresh set of bearings for positive response. So by doing this, you scramble your mind's attempts to self-sabotage you and then what you do is then you rewind and you reground yourself at a later point once you've got that new reality sort of locked down. Now look, this stuff goes deep, right? It goes deep, it's fairly complicated to begin to unwire it. And over the years, we've gotten very good at pinpointing the various ways that people rationalize failure, rationalize failure to take action, and, and sort of hide from their own success. And beyond that, we've also developed many, many ways to give you an awareness of how these things are affecting you first, and then number two, install tools that are gonna allow you to push that off so you can actually take control of your life and you can actually begin to direct it in a way that's much, much more fulfilling. And look, RSD, we can actually help you to arrive at this point. This year, we've actually debuted a brand new four-day broad spectrum self-help program. We've been testing this out in several cities, like some select cities, beta tests. Uh, you know, we put on a couple of these so far, and the response has been great. In fact, many students, uh, attendees have reported 
that the whole four day experience, it's, it's overwhelming to the extent where they actually can't process it all until several weeks after the program. So this isn't just some surface level nonsense rah-rah session where we're like, just think positive guys. What we're, what we're providing here is hardcore value, transformative change work. And this is how you get to the place where you're actually living the life you always wanted. And even if you're a typically shy person, you know, a prototypically introverted person that's had trouble going and connecting with other people socially in the past, you can do this. And if you look around, you're gonna find there's really no one else out there that's providing this kind of intensely personalized program that's actually based on rock solid principles that you glean from real world experience that actually works. So anyway, you're gonna be hearing a lot more about this new program in the near future as we begin the actual full rollout. You can check that out today by hitting that link in the description. This has been your boy, Jeffy, telling you to get out of the house and make the myths. Jeffy.